Welcome back and welcome to part two of this stylized tune shader tea scene created with Blender. If you haven't seen the previous part, then definitely check that out with the link in the description. So in this part, we're gonna be modeling the spoon and we'll also be modeling the tea kettle. And if you'd like to purchase the finished artwork project files, then you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. The links are in the description. And then just one more thing before we start, I wanted to let you know about my furniture and home asset pack for Blender. In this furniture and home 3D model asset pack, you will get 250 furniture and home Blender 3D models. Pre-set up for Blender's asset browser and ready to add to your projects. Quickly fill in your 3D scenes just by dragging the models from the asset browser into your 3D scene. The models have been split up into five different categories in the asset browser. The categories include office assets, living room assets, kitchen assets, dining room assets, and a combined bedroom and bathroom assets. There's also a free demo available that you can try out before purchasing. Check out the product with the links in the description, and you can also find the full product video with the link in the description. Alright, so let's start by modeling the tea kettle. So to model the tea kettle, I'm going to be using a built-in Blender add-on. So let's click here on edit and then we'll go to the preferences and then over here on the add-ons tab if you go to the search you can start to type in extra and we're going to click on the add mesh extra objects add-on so just click on that to enable it and then you can save the preferences if you want to and you can close blender's user preferences so now if i go to the add menu and go to mesh you can see that there are these new extra objects and I'm going to go to extra and then I'm going to go to the teapot plus and it will add this teapot in here So I'm now going to bring the tea kettle back farther into the scene and I'll use the object context menu and we'll shade it smooth Now I'm going to go into edit mode and I'll deselect everything and I'll just hover my mouse over the top piece and press the L key to select the link vertices and let's bring the entire thing up on the z-axis and scale it up a little bit So I'll now hold down the alt key and just select that loop of vertices there Let's press 1 to go to front view and I want to extrude this out a bit and then rotate it around so I'll extrude this part down and scale it up and then extrude it down again we can go into wireframe just to see that and just kind of curve that in there just like that so that it's nice and round and then again hover your mouse over this piece and press the L key to select the link vertices and we'll scale it up a little bit more now back in object mode I'm gonna press Control 2 to add a subdivision surface with two levels and we can now go into edit mode again and we can scale this up and just make it fit the T so that the top of the teapot matches with the bottom so that's pretty good. I might just bring it up slightly on the z-axis a little bit. Now if I go back into edit mode, I want this part, the front part of the tea kettle, to actually be merging together with the actual teapot. So right now you can see this default object just has this part extruded back in and that's not too realistic. So I'm going to go here to the face select and I'm going to hold down the shift key and select all of these six faces here and I'll hit X to delete and we'll delete the faces. I'm now going to go here to the vertex select and I'll hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices and I'm going to double tap the G key and that will activate the edge slide and I can just bring it back then I can go to front view and I can rotate this over just to kind of match the rest of the tea kettle so something like that so I can now select all of these four vertices here and press the F key to fill a face and then I can just select these two vertices so this one and this one and then just press the F key and just continue to press the F key and it's going to fill all the faces around and merge that together and then you can also press Control R to add a loop cut click and then drag down pretty close and click there just to sharpen that up all right, so that looks a bit better. Now, if you wanted to, you could pretty much do the exact same thing back here. So you might need to add some loop cuts and then you could cut out the vertices and then merge them together and kind of do the same thing. But I'm not really gonna do that. You could totally do that if you want to in your own time. But in the final scene, you're not even gonna be able to see the back of the tea kettle. So I'm just not gonna do it in the tutorial. All right, so let's model the spoons. So I will press Shift C to make sure the 3D cursor is in the very center of the scene. And I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna add a plane for the spoons. And let's move the plane out here and bring it up on the z-axis and I'll zoom into it and I'll go into edit mode and I'm gonna scale it way down so it's much smaller and then bring it in and then I can also bring it out like that so it's a bit longer and then I'll press Control R to add a loop cut and I'll left click and right click so the loop cut stays where it is and I'll just bring this up on the z-axis like that and then I can press the one on the numpad to go to front view and I'll go into wireframe and I'll deselect everything and I'm just gonna box like this side here and maybe bring that up a bit and I can extrude that down and then extrude that out and then deselect select everything and just box select this piece here and bring that up and just extrude that down there 
And this is definitely helpful to look at reference images. I am looking at a reference image to get the shape of the spoon. So I'll go back to solid view. So you can now see here's the back of the spoon and then it kind of comes up and come down. And then the circular spoon shape is gonna be right here. Now on the back here, I also wanna make it a bit longer. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select all these vertices and I can scale them up on the Y axis. And then just select these four vertices and scale that up on the Y axis a little bit so that it just gets a little bit longer as it comes towards the end and maybe scale that up a little bit. And then I can also add a loop cut in the center by pressing Control R and I can left click and right click so it stays where it is. And then if I just select this vertex right here, I can just bring it out and up a little bit just like that so that the back of the spoon kind of has this nice pointy piece. And I might want to box select all of these vertices here and bring them in a little bit on the Y axis just so they're a little bit more thin. All right, so I'll now go to the add menu and we're going to do this in edit mode. So in edit mode, press shift A and we are going to add a circle. And before you move the circle around or click away, we're going to click right up here on the add circle settings. And on the vertices, I'm going to change this to a 14 and then I can close the add circle settings. Let's go to top view and I can move the circle down here and I can also scale it out on the X axis and then scale it way down and bring it over just a little bit. And then I can also hold down the shift key and select these two vertices here on the front. And let's press the O key, which is gonna turn on the proportional editing. And I can scale the entire thing down a little bit so that the front of the spoon kind of tapers in a little bit more. You could also select these here and you could scale them out a bit on the Y axis so it just kind of is a bit longer back and forth. Let's go back to solid view. So I can now box select all these vertices and bring them over. And I actually need to press the O key or click right here to turn off the proportional editing. Let's kind of match it up there and align it. And then I can press control R to add a loop cut there and left click and right click so that it just adds that single vertex. And I'm now gonna hold down the shift key, select these vertices and press F to fill a face and then select those vertices and press F to fill a face. And then if I go here to side view, I need to box select these vertices here and bring them up, bring them up on the Z axis like that and maybe bring it out a little bit. And then if I press one on the numpad to go to front view, just kind of put that where you want. And we are gonna be later rotating the spoon a little bit so it's kind of coming up, but for now I'll just leave it where it is like that. So now I wanna extrude it down and then scale it down and we'll just scale it down like that and then extrude it again and scale it down again. So something like that. And then let's go back to object mode and I'll select the bottom plane and just press the H key to hide that plane. And then I can select the spoon and go back into edit mode. And I'm just gonna hold down the shift key and select these vertices and press the F key to fill them. Then select these two vertices and just continue to press the F key to fill all of those faces right there. Although the last one here, I wanna add a loop cut here. So I'll press control R to add a loop cut left click and right click just right there so it's in the very center and then I can hold down the shift key select these vertices and fill that with the F key select these vertices and fill that as well and then right down here these bottom vertices I'm going to select all of them and I can bring them down on the Z axis and then select these ones and bring them down on the Z axis just so that the bottom of the spoon is nice and round. So let's now go to front view again, and I'll go into wireframe, and I'm just gonna box select the spoon piece, and I can rotate it and kind of bring it up here, so it kind of rotates over. So there's the spoon's piece, then it rotates down, and then the handle here kind of comes up a little bit, and then it rotates down again. All right, so something like that is pretty good. Let's now press Control 2 in object mode to add a subdivision surface with two levels, and I'll use the object context menu and shade it smooth. Now, if this is happening for you where there's some weird glitches here, this is probably because you need to recalculate the normals. So I'll go into edit mode, and I'll select everything, and I'll press Shift N to recalculate the normals, and that fixes those issues. So I can go back to object mode now, so that's really starting to look like a spoon. Let's also click on Add Modifier, and I can search for the Solidify modifier just to make it thicker. And I can just turn the thickness value, I'm gonna turn it into the negative values so that the thickness goes down. So something like that, just make it a little bit thick. And then let's also add some loop cuts to sharpen up the edges. So I wanna add a loop cut right here. So I'll press Control R. I can left click, drag over to sharpen that up and left click there. So it kind of sharpens up that edge. And then over here, Control R and drag this forward and click there just so it sharpens that up. All right, and I can go back to object mode and we will save this again and that is looking pretty good. And the spoon is a little bit too big. So I'm gonna select the spoon and I'll scale the entire thing down just a little bit. So something like that is a bit better. And bring it down a little bit because I will want to duplicate the spoon and kind of stick it right here. So I'm kind of looking at the teacup and seeing what size I want. So I think what I'm going to do is make it a little bit smaller 
that's probably a good size. And then I can press control A and apply the scale. So that's the new default size of the object. But when you apply the scale, it might mess up the solidify. So you might just need to adjust that thickness. So I'll make it a little bit more thin. All right, something like that. And that's gonna be it for the spoon. Let's press Alt H to unhide the objects and I will save this again with Control S. So let's now model the cloth napkins. So I'll go to the add menu and we're gonna be adding a plane for this and I'll bring the plane up and then I'll go into edit mode and I'll scale the napkin up just a little bit bigger. And then in edit mode, we're gonna use the object context menu and we're gonna subdivide it. You can also press control E and then you can click on the subdivide button. Now, after you subdivide it, if you click right here on the subdivide settings, we can turn up the number of cuts. And I'm going to turn the number of cuts up to like a 40 and then I can close the subdivide settings Now why I'm subdividing this is because we're going to be adding cloth physics and the cloth physics need more geometry So it looks higher quality. So let's go back to object mode and I'm going to rotate this cloth piece over and I can kind of bring it over here And so we're going to make it fall down and kind of fall in itself So it'll be kind of overlapping itself if we rotate it sideways So now let's go over here to the settings So the physics settings right here and with the the cloth selected we're going to add the cloth physics and then to make it actually interact with the plane we're going to select the plane and on the physics properties right here we're going to add the collision physics now, if you select the plane again, I want the plane to collide with itself during the animation. So we're going to go over here to the settings and we're going to scroll right down here. We're going to open up the collisions and then we're going to check mark the self collisions. So this way it'll actually collide with itself and kind of fold over itself. So you can press the space bar to play or hit the play button and you can just have this kind of simulate and the cloth piece just falls down. Now, if the cloth object isn't big enough or if there's too much detail, you can see the cloth is kind of shrinking into itself. So an easy way to fix this is to just scale the object up quite a bit bigger And then after we apply the cloth physics, we can scale it down to a better size So I'll make it much bigger and then play this you can see that looks a lot better So the folds are a lot nicer and it's not being scrunched into itself quite as much because the distance of each one of the vertices are farther apart So really you can just play around with this by rotating it kind of moving it around and then playing it and just finding a good spot that you like You can also use the object context menu and shade it smooth So it looks a little bit better and then to actually make make it a bit higher quality, you can press control two, and that's going to add a subdivision surface with two levels. And over here on the modifiers, you want the subdivision surface to be after the cloth physics so that it doesn't become too high resolution. So it first does the cloth physics and then it subdivides it after. And that will also make sure that the cloth physics plays at a good speed. So you can just move this around to a different angle and just kind of play it. Another thing you could do is go into edit mode and you could press the O key to turn on the proportional editing and you could select a vertex and you could pull it out and then scroll your mouse wheel to change the size of the proportional editing. And you could kind of make it rotate it a little bit. And that way, when I play this, it's gonna fold over itself just a little bit better. So I kind of like that a bit better. You can see kind of how it's folded. All right, so that is a pretty good cloth simulation for the first one. So I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate this and move it over here. And you can see it's being moved over, but because it's trying to simulate it, it's kind of being messed up. So just move this over here so that we have a second one. And then if we select this one here, if you like how this is, you can click on the cloth setting here or the cloth physics you can click on the drop down and then click on apply so apply the cloth modifier so if i go into edit mode you can see it's actual geometry now i'm going to be making two of them so let's here on the timeline drag the playhead over to the starting again and we can just kind of go into edit mode we can change the shape of it and we're going to be making a second one so press the space bar to play and we can just let this simulate because i want to have two different cloth napkins and that's actually a really nice one i like how that is i like how there's kind of a fold here and then it folds over over itself and then folds back over itself again. So once you've just played this to a spot where you like, you can click on the drop down and then just click on apply. So now we have two different cloth napkins. So I can select the napkins and I can scale them down to a better size because I think they're a little bit too big. And then if you select both of the objects, you can press control A and apply the scale. So that's the new default size of the object. And we'll bring the cloth napkins down here. Now you can see it sometimes is a little bit hard to see when it's actually going through the bottom of the plane. So what we can do to fix that is to click here on this arrow to go to the shading settings and we can turn on this shadow here. So the shadow will kind of add this nice little shadow and so it makes it easier to see when one of the objects is about to touch the other object. 
Another thing you could do if you want to is to go to the shading. You could turn on this cavity right here. And then if you click on the type here, you could change it to both instead. And so this will kind of add like a little bit of an ambient occlusion effect. So it kind of just helps and makes it easier to see when the objects are getting close to each other. So I'm just going to bring this down just like that. And then if we select the object, I want to give it a solidify modifier so that it actually has some thickness. So I'll click on add modifier and we can add the solidify modifier and just make it a very small amount just to make it a bit solid. We'll select this object here, click on add modifier, and we'll also add a solidify to this cloth napkin and just change the thickness and make it very small. Now you can see that when I try to rotate the cloth, you can see that the origin point is way up here. So the origin point is higher up on the cloth and that is because we simulated it falling down. So if I select both pieces of the cloth, I will go object and I'll click on set origin and I'll set the origin to the geometry. So the origin is in the very center now. So I'll press Control S to save, and this is going to finish it up for this part of the tutorial. So I hope you're enjoying this so far, and thank you for watching. So when part three is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen, and the link will be in the description. And if you'd like to purchase the finished project files of this tutorial, as well as help support the channel, you can get that on my GovRoad store and my Patreon page. The links are in the description. So thanks for watching, I hope you're enjoying this so far, and I'll see you in the next part, part three.